Hey everybody, it's Jeremy. Welcome to a new Dominions series. This is Bosmos 2. Um, oh god. What have I gotten myself into? Okay, uh, so we are playing in the Bosmos 2 game, which is one of the massive games being hosted over on Lucid Server by Boz, the maker of Bosmod. Um, it's a 74-person game. Uh, on the giant Bosmos map uh, that has a bunch of different planets and satellites and crazy space shit and everything like that. It's uh, super intense. Um, it is being done with, you can see the mods on the side here, the Bos mod, which introduces a bunch of new nations, generally pretty powerful nations, um, a couple of different, like, I say a couple of different, a fair amount of balance tweaks and things like that, etc. Um, it is a Dominions Enhanced game, so we have also have all of the Dominions Enhanced nations, so a whole lot going on there. It's got Lucid's thematic gem generator, so a bunch of gem generation items added into the mix. It is a one-age game because it has to be a one-age game to, to work with um, with all of this stuff and to have enough nations for 74 players to play in one game um, and then it has the rebirth mod which is a mod that uh increases growth in low pop provinces and creates events in provinces that have um population under a certain threshold so that they can re build those provinces. Basically, it's an anti-death um, nation, or an anti- uh, uh, It's an anti-Ermor Lemuria nation, honestly. Like, uh, pop kill is what my mind, my mind was blanking. Yeah, it's an anti-pop kill na um, mod. Um, obviously, like, it doesn't do much to those nations, right? If, if a pop kill nation is, um, you know, still alive it's not gonna do anything to them but it, it incentivizes players to kill those nations rather than ignore those nations because rebirth will it'll take a long time but it'll actually replenish those lands for you so. all right uh this is gonna be a nation overview for the nation we are playing uh which is gonna be chaco uh so let's jump in we'll do a little test game here Take a look at all of the stuff. Where are we? Here we are. Chaco. So Chaco is one of the nations added in by DE. It is in a line of nations. Chaco is the early age variant of the nation. Chaco the fourth world. Uh, then you have old Ongtukwa. Um, I do not know if that's how you pronounce that. The parched land and new Ongtukwa. The cleansing flame. Um, I think, uh, honestly, these two nations are maybe a little more interesting than Chaco is. When I came to the recruitment for this game, it was very late in the recruitment. Um, I think there were like 60 plus people who had already gotten into the game, um, and there were only 74 in the game. So I did not have many choices to choose from comparatively. Um, and I didn't have a lot of time, so uh, I have a little bit of experience with Chaco from previous single-player games and things like that, so I decided to just go with something that I was at least somewhat familiar with. Um, so we're gonna take a look at Chaco. Alright. In the lands of Chaco lives a race of humans and divine Katsina spirit beings. They tell of three previous worlds abandoned in ages past, and how they journeyed through the underworld to this one. Now a new god is awakening to lead them to glory in the fourth world. The inhabitants of Chaco live in the canyons around Sipapu, the entrance to the underworld. The Katsinem are spirits of fertility and bring rain and life to the lands with their rituals. They are magically and physically powerful and can animate plants to ensnare attackers. The secret of ironworking has not yet been discovered and flint, wood, and bone are used to construct tools and weapons. Oh joy. <laughs> It always, it always hurts me a little bit to play One Age games with uh, EA nations that don't even have iron weapons. EA, EA like tribal nations. Because it's one thing if you're an EA, because you know that you're not, you're not going to go up against sophisticated technology in EA, right? 
But if you're in a one age game and you're going up against late age super tech, oof, it's uh, it can be rough. Um, and I say it can be rough, like it the units, uh, it can be rough with the units, um, and we'll talk about that in a little bit. But one of my biggest things is it it gets rough with just like fucking forts. You know, like, so we're going to have, we're going to have, like, 150 uh, max forts versus, depending on who we're around, like, 500, 750 max forts, right? So, woo, that's going to be a pain in the ass. Hmm. All right. So we've got uh, humans and cats in M that make up our, our nation. We prefer heat scales one. We've got light infantry and archers, very light infantry and archers, um, and then we have sacred Katsina warriors and powerful sacred summons? Question mark. It's it's a little misleading. We'll we'll talk about that here in a little bit. Um, then we've got strong earth and nature. Hey, I'm basically playing Ur again. Woo! And some fire, water, air, and astral. Uh, so, some fire, some water, some air, and astral. What this actually means is low paths, um, but we've got a lot of astral, we've got a lot of fire. Uh, water and air is, eh, for us. We've got strong priest, we've got recruitable uh, priest threes. Uh, we get bonus earth bless points and nature bless points. We have primitive forts. We can build underwater forts if we ever get underwater. Um, and, and which I say that that way because like it's a 74 player game. So there's a fair amount of underwater nations. I, I'm looking, I know, I know certain things, so I'm looking cross-eyed, but in theory, there's a fair amount of underwater nations. <laughs> Uh, temples cost 400, labs cost 500, so no special, like, temple or lab prices or anything like that. Primitive forts, whatever. Um, okay. We are actually going to, I think, start... Normally I will go... No, 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 we'll save the best for last. We'll save the best for last. I guess. Uh, yeah, because it's not going to take long to get through our base stuff. So, we're going to go through our base units... Um, and then we'll go through our commanders. So base units, we start off with the Chikoan Adelatl Warrior. Um, super cheap units, undisciplined, very weak. Has a uh, basically a javelin, an Adelatl, right? Um, at very mediocre stats. This is bleh. even even like massing for siege strength is is. And this is very rarely, if ever, this is bad. This is very bad. They bad, they bad, they bad. Super bad. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Um, Chico and Archers. These guys are... Okay, take a look at their stats. Super cheap, gold 7. Resources 4. Recruitment 7. Um, this These guys actually aren't bad. Uh, they have a composite bow, uh, 40 range, 11 attack, 11 damage. This is basically comparable with a normal archer, except it's cheaper, way cheaper on resources and cheaper on gold. I think normal archers are like 10 gold and like 12 resources or something like that. Um, so Chocoan archers are pretty damn massable and not, not bad. They're kind of like an in-between between like... Um, what you would expect out of pygmies because pygmies are super cheap but they don't have a very good bow chico and archers are a little more expensive but they actually have a pretty decent bow um now obviously right like how good are bows gonna be in a game with in one age right where you're dealing with late age um you know people with heavy protection with a bunch of shields and helmets and things like that it, it really depends on who we are matched up against. If we're matched up against some light armor individuals or individuals who don't fare well against flaming arrows, uh, then these Chico and Archers can be pretty good for us. Um, otherwise, they're as useless as the majority of our infantry. Uh, we get the Chico and Club Warriors. These guys are basically just cheap. Uh, they have decent defense. Uh, they've got a little spiked club. Does not hit very hard. 
Uh, they do have a shield, so they can somewhat survive the rain of arrows from their own allies, but they don't have a helmet, so they don't do it very well. Um, cheap, 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 cheap. That's about it. Uh, Chikoan Spear Warrior, same thing as the Club Warrior, just with the spear. <laughs> like, really, really pretty much the same. You get a slightly weaker attack with a chance to repel, depending on who you're up against. You're minus one resource. I think everything else is identical, it looks like. So, um, kind of meh on the differing, you know, what our options are there. And again, we have the Chikoan Axe Warrior. Now, these guys are actually a little bit better. They are slightly akin to our Elite Warriors. Um, slightly more resources. They have an axe that hits somewhat harder. Slightly less defense than the club and spear variants. Um, and they do have a throwing axe, which has abysmal precision. But, um, you know, if you have a whole bunch of them, and again, if you're doing something like flaming arrows, then these guys can be... Eh, not very good, but uh, some... Uh, the, no, if it's if it's not blue, it's not gonna be great on on uh, infantry. We got the Chikoan armored warrior. Uh, this guy is one of our only people that uh, no one else has protection, right? No protection, no protection, no protection, right? The Chikoan armored warrior has ten protection. Uh, somewhat better. Um, still pretty cheap. Still pretty low resources comparatively. Has a stone spear, not a very good combatant. Has defense 13 still. Will sit in a front line. Has a hat. Has moose hide armor. Has a shield. Um, actually, not great, but not the worst thing in existence. Comparatively to what we have. Right? And then we have the Chico and Elite Warriors. Uh, these guys are slightly better, but honestly, considering what you're getting... Um, they're not really that great comparatively for the gold and the resources. So they have a stone axe. Like I said, they're they're kind of like the axe warrior ver versions, but with better stats and some protection. So they have an actual um, body armor, so the enchanted leather hauberk. Um, so they have some protection. They have okay defense. They have a little bit better attack skill. Um, they're not great, but generally speaking, either the Elite Warriors or the Armored Warriors are going to be better for you. Um, depending on like what kind of buffs you can give them, the Elite Warriors can be pretty good if you can get um, some decent like protection buffs on them um, or other things. Um, same with the Chico and Armored Warriors. They're not going to be great. They're not going to do a whole lot of damage or anything like that. But if you can get, like, Wooden Warriors on them or something like that, uh, they can hold a field for a while. Legions of Steel, right? Since they actually have three armor pieces, uh, Legions of Steel can really help them, um, etc. So, that type of thing. And then, um, I think I think I want to save the the our Blue Boys, our Katsina and and everything for the end. So we're going to go through commanders all the way up until we get to the Katsina, and then we'll review what the actual, the, the big deal about Chaco is. Um, so, uh, up to commanders, we've got a uh, basic scout, um, Chaco and stout, scout, nothing special here, pretty cheap, uh, stealth 40, wasteland, mountain, and four survival, so that's nice, right? We got a couple survivals on there. They can move around pretty decently. Um, not bad. Uh, we got our Kosharis. These are actually interesting little scenarios. Uh, very cheap. They are sacred. But the big deal for them is, is they are, they have a patrol bonus of 20. And they have uh, reduced unrest by 3%. So they're, they're basically sacred clowns that just perform and make everything. They keep an eye out on, on your people and they make everything better in your province. Um, these guys are actually pretty useful, uh, especially for, depending on if you're going, um, like what kind of scales you're going, uh, just reducing unrest naturally consistently is pretty strong. Um, but honestly, the patrol bonus, considering how cheap these guys are and they're sacred, right? So they literally cost one gold per, per turn. Um, very, very cheap. You can have 
a crap ton of these, right? Um, and if you have a crap ton of these, you can patrol really, really well in your lands, right? Um, you can keep your lands free of scouts, um, stealthy raiders, etc., etc. Um, pretty, pretty decently useful in the right situations. Um, next up, we've got Kikmongwis. These are just our basic leaders, leadership 40, nothing special, nothing setting them apart. Very simple, easy peasy. Okay. Uh, we've got our village elders. These are our base okay leadership. They have leadership 80, so they can actually lead formations and things like that. They are not super expensive um, when it comes to an 80 leadership leader, but they also don't really get anything special, and they're old. Um, so they can very quickly start to develop... Um, ailments and things like that and kind of be a pain in the ass um we don't want much of many of them specifically because we've got better leaders um but we'll need them on the occasion to kind of like hold up forts or things like that um to be to be 80 80 leadership um billet or uh, commanders Blech. my freaking brain's going dead um but otherwise we don't really like them um, we've got a Chikoan priest, which can be recruited outside forts as well. So anywhere you have a temple, you can recruit a Chikoan priest. Pretty low um, gold cost, and it's just a priest one, sacred priest one. Um, not bad, depending on what you're trying to accomplish. If you need a, if you need a shit ton of priests for fighting the undead, these guys are okay. Not great, but okay. Uh, if you need um, a shit ton of preachers to spread out on the edge of your lands, these guys aren't great, but they're okay. It's it's kind of that scenario. Like, that's the motto for Chico and Priest. They're not great, but they're okay. <laughs> Very cheap. Um, priest ones. Simple, easy peasy. And then we actually get into our mages, and some of these are kind of interesting and special. So we'll take a little bit more time to talk about them uh, the first one we have is the Chikoan Sun Priest. The Chikoan Sun Priest is a very cheap priest, 70 or or a very cheap mage, 70 gold, um, but he doesn't come with much. He has fire one, he is a priest one, and he is sacred, um, and he has spirit sight. Very low research ability, but this guy can be super useful in a couple of different situations. Um, one, he is still a priest, so again, depending on who you're going up against, uh, can be very useful for that type of scenario. Um, he is also our only base source of fire. Um, when when it says some fire, it means, hey, well, I say, yeah, base source of fire. This guy can get fire. This guy can also get fire, but it's a random chance, so... Um, so, why why is that important? Um, well, it can be important just for getting things sight searched. It can be important for a couple, you know, like you can try to, you know, do some lesser fire elementals in the early game or things like that. But because this is DE, it actually has quite a few uh, spells added in. One of the spells added in that I think is potentially very important for Chaco depending on who you go up against, is create flaming missiles. So there's basically, instead of flaming arrows, or fire arrows, or whatever it's called, I think it's flaming arrows, um, which is, you know, middle re middling research. I think it's like, that's uh, three or four down, like enchantment or something like that. Um, instead, uh, create flame, I think that's actually like four or five down enchantment. Check real quick. It is... Flaming Arrow. Yeah, Flaming Arrows is enchantment 4, right? Um, and requires a 4 fire caster and 1 gem. Um, but it hits the whole battlefield. Create Flaming Missiles is a construction 1. Also, bless you. Um, and only requires 1 path and no, no gems. But it only has a 3 area of effect, right? So what you can do is you can take a couple of these Chikoan Sun Priests and you can have like two or three of them 
next to a squad of archers and do create flaming missiles, create flaming missiles. Um, and you'll get the majority of those archers. And then all of a sudden you have, you know, um, plus eight armor piercing fire arrows. That's pretty nice. Um, it's not crazy, but depending on who you're going up against, it can be pretty good. The only problem with it is you do not have great protection against your own flaming arrows. So you will flambe your own people. Um, so yeah. Chico and Sun Priest, interesting, have some kind of niche uses, but overall, not a super big deal for us. Uh, next up is probably one of the biggest deals for us. Chico and Star Priests. 70 gold, Astral 1, Sacred. Okay. We are, we, we an Astral Nation, yo. Let's go. Um, we can produce a crap ton of these. They are very cheap. Um, they are old, which is annoying, but, uh, it's not a huge deal. Compelled to, like, compared to, like, the Village Elders, right? Um, where we're only going to want a handful of those, and if one of them gets one of them gets a bunch of afflictions, then it's kind of annoying and a pain in the ass. We're going to have hundreds of these guys, um, and if one of them gets some shitty afflictions, whatever, you know? So, this is basically just Communion City. Uh, not as good of a Communion as something like, say... Sequani Stargazers. I'm not saying that for any particular reason. I haven't seen a massive communion of those or anything. Um, but uh, they're not quite that cheap, but they are pretty good. They're also sacred, so if we wanted to go a, a particular build, like a penetration build or something like that, they these can actually do that. In fact, I think that is actually a decent route for you to go with Chaco. Um, going something like magic scales and um, really basically like rushing up um, Thaumaturgy to get Soul Slay and doing like a pin on your Bless and maybe like some Reinvigoration or something like that. That could actually be pretty strong um, considering what you kind of have access here with the Chico and Star Priests. So, there is that. Um, this, is a, this is a workhorse for our nation. Big, big, big workhorse for our nation. Um, next up is the Povosqua, which can be recruited outside forts, so anywhere you have a lab. Um, and this is a really interesting thing that I think the... I don't know who designed this nation, by the way. Um, so... Uh, I got pros and cons, so... <laughs> some some good shit, some bad shit. Um, I think the Povosqua was intended to be kind of like this really cool thing for the nation. We'll talk we'll talk about why here later, uh, once we go over some of the, the national spells. But um, I don't think it actually turns out to be that way, unfortunately. So let's uh, take a look at the Povosqua. Gold, 115. And when we look at it... A comparatively, right, we get an Earth 1, and we get Inept Researcher. And right off the bat, like, comparatively, 115 gold to the 70 gold we get out of a Star Priest, that ain't good. That is not good at all. And then you stack on something like Inept Researcher, that's also not good. But we do have a random, right? So what's our random? Oh, okay. So we've got Fire, Air, Earth, or nature. So we've got a little bit of a spread. We could get fire earth, we could get air earth, we could get earth 2, or we could get nature 1 at earth 1. Well, part of the problem is is we don't care about half of these, the earth and the nature side, because our Katsina do that better, right? Um, we don't really care about fire 1, because there's not really a lot of, like, fire, fire, earth, cross path stuff. I guess there's maybe a couple things, right? Um, we basically only really care about air because the Povosqua and our Wuyas are the only way we can get air one. That's it, right? Now, I will say this. So, so this is, this is right off the top. Um, this is kind of a meh unit, right? 
Earth 1 is not super good. It doesn't really get us a lot of things. Um, Earth 2 is okay because then we can Earth Power into other stuff. But like I said, we've got other individuals that can do that better if we need them to do that. I guess Pavosquas are more massable for that type of scenario. But then you have Inept Researcher and that really hurts, right? So... Um, they do have this 10% random. There is a chance that they get a little bit better, but that is not something that you can rely on very well. You know, while you're producing the couple that you need, if you get super lucky, great, you got super lucky, whatever. Um, and that's about it. There, there is something special about the Pavosquas, though. Um, they have two national spells, and we'll talk about this later when we go through the national spells. They have two national spells that buff them if they go through them. Um, they basically can go on vision quests, okay? Um, my problem with it is, is I do not think what you get out of those vision quests is good enough to worry about massing these Pavosquas and giving a shit, unfortunately. Right? It's cool. It's borderline good but it's not good right it's right on that edge it wants to be good but it's not it, it it needs it it for what it does it's not it's not worth it and it comes too late um so we'll talk about that more when we actually go through the national spells and again this is all of course everything that i say keep this in mind i should have put this addendum I'm not an expert player. I'm a casual player. This is all my personal opinion, etc. So take this with a grain of salt, right? Don't don't at me. All right. So those are those are all our human units. Now let's take a look at our Katsina. We have Katsina warriors and Katsina archers, and then we have Mung Katsinas and Wuyas. Um, so these are our specials. We've got. Uh, we'll start with the units. Katsina warriors. Yoy. Okay, so right off the bat, we can see these are incredibly expensive. 90 gold is no fucking joke for a cap-only sacred. That is fucking intense. And 39 recruitment points is also pretty intense. What are we getting out of that? We're getting decent HP. Okay. We're getting okay strength. Size 3. Okay. And mediocre stats on the other stuff. Attack 12, defense 13, uh, magic resistance 13, morale 14. These guys are okay. They're like little mini giants. But for 90 gold? Oh no. Oh fuck no. That is not. That's not. Protection 1? Now we do see they have invulnerability. So that is somewhat better. But part of the problem is going to be we're, we're playing a game with 74 fucking people in it. And a lot of these people are going to be taking magic weapons. Because no one wants to be that person who gets caught out by something like Therados or Lemuria, right? And is like, well, I guess I'm dead because I didn't bring magic weapons, you know? Um, so this isn't going to help us that much. There are also magic beings, which is cool, but can be a deficit depending on who you're running up against. And they have spirit sight, which is nice. That's actually pretty good. They've got a Katsina War Spear, which hits decently hard thanks to their high strength. Um, and it is magic, so that's nice. We don't have to take magic weapons. We we get away with not taking magic weapons. Alright, so we're taking a look at this, and this is not worth 90 gold in any way, shape, form, or fashion. Take a look at the Katsina Archer. Um, 100 gold. <laughs> Jesus. Uh, more resources, same recruitment points. Mostly the same stats, around the same stats, um, same abilities. These just come with a enchanted bow, which is range 40, decent precision, and 14 um, magic damage. So that's nice. And a Katsina War Club, uh, which actually hits harder than the Katsina War Spear. So uh, the Katsina Archers are actually kind of like superior, generally speaking, depending on some thing. We'll talk about those things. Okay, but again, not worth a hundred fucking gold. Are you kidding me? But there's a secret. There is a secret hidden in, in the text. 
And it's right here. It's they are magically and physically powerful and can animate plants to ensnare attackers. Um, let's see if it's in here too. Yeah, as spirits of nature, they are protected against mundane weapons and will cause nearby plants to ensnare attackers. So here's the thing. Here's here's why Katsinas are 90 gold and 100 gold. Because every single one of them has a built-in vine shield. Yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. That's that's a that's a decently big deal. Oh, okay. That's that's fair. So yeah, so I'm not I'm not I'm I'm not 100% convinced that a built-in vine shield still is worth it. <laughs> Right? It's very borderline. Sometimes it's really, really good. Sometimes it's like, eh, this is okay. Um, but generally speaking, that's why the Katsina are so expensive, is because they have a built-in vine shield. Um, you can take ten of these guys, and you can, ex you can take ten. You can take five of these guys. They're kind of like uh, elves in that scenario, right? You can take five of them and expect to ro reliably expand against just about anything with or without a bless because well i say without a bless without a bless they they you'll take attrition you'll you'll falter here or there depending on what you're up against um but the vine shield basically does a great job keeping these guys alive um it's really really good and then when you're dealing with like indies, the invulnerable ten really helps as well. So, so that's the interesting thing. That's that's the gimmick. That's Chaco's thing. Is the Katsina have vine shield? Period. All the Katsina units have a built-in vine shield. Um, so yeah, we're gonna try to build around that. So let's take a look at our our Katsina commanders. We have the Mong Katsina, and then we have the Wuya. Mong Katsina are any any forts. Um, with a lab and a temple because they are both sacred and uh, mages so they're pretty pricey they have got 260 gold uh, and they are slow to recruit I think this is a I think this is a problem I do not think they should be slow to recruit maybe increase the price a little bit but I don't honestly think you need to do that um, I it, compare because if it was just vanilla yeah probably but Compared to the other shit in DE, nah, this is this is not busted in any way, shape, form, or fashion. They should not be slow to recruit. Um, so what are we getting? Kind of the same thing as we were getting with the Katsina, right? Decent hit, hit points, size 3, so kind of like a semi-giant. Um, okay stats, good strength, good magic resistance starting at 16 for a, a base mage. Morale 14, not the greatest, but whatever. These guys don't have good leadership, which is unfortunate, so you can't just use them here or there, wherever you want. And then you have Earth 1, Nature 2, Priest 1. They've got Invulnerable 10, Supply Bonus, Spirit Sight, Magic Beings, and they are Ambidextrous. So, these guys are okay casters to utilize in your armies, depending on what you are using um what you're trying to do this is why i was saying like we've got other people that are more reliable than the pavosquas right these guys come with earth one just like the pavosquas do and then they come with nature two um so they can do the vast majority of the stuff that the pavosquas are going to do with their earth and nature aspects um but the cool though honestly the cool thing is for these guys they they get you easy access to a couple of your national spells and then the other big thing is, is that these guys are, I don't want to say good, and I don't want to say cheap, but they are your cheapest, best thugs, right? Because um, you got you keep that in mind, that concept of these guys are sacred, so they're going to take your bless. They are, they have a built-in vine shield, so automatically that's a good thing. And then they have really good, and, and people are relatively aware of this, right? They have really good thug or raiding um, paths, right? Earth 1 gets you iron skin, um, gets you temper flesh, right? 
Um, nature 2 gets you regeneration. So you can pop into a place, go bless, or iron skin, temper flesh, regeneration. I've already got a vine shield, right? You don't even have to give these guys any gear, but if you give them cheap gear, a uh, Kithrionic lion pelt, all of a sudden that protection goes from 20 to like 28, you know? Um, you give them like a fire helmet or something like that, it's 30 plus protection. You give them um, a sword, like a frost brand or something like that, or, or something cheaper, like a mace of disruption or whatever, and they've actually got little a good little AoE, you know? Um, they, they are, uh, again, I don't want to say good and I don't want to say cheap because you got to, you got to compare them to something. I, again, I think another good comparison is maybe comparing them to like elves, right? Um, if you compare this to a Vanyarl, I think Vanyarls are 260 gold, right? So this guy is going to do about as good as a Vanyarl does in making sure that he can survive things. The problem is, that, and this is why I say they're not good necessarily, um, it is because the Vanyarl, right, is going to do what the monk Atsina does, but the Vanyarl can get to where he needs to get to easier than the monk Atsina does. His cloud trapeze, he, uh, and he can get away from where he needs to go um, way easier because he has stealth, right? Monk Atsina doesn't have those things. And the kicker is that the monk Atsina is slow to recruit. So this is why I think, right, that the, the monk Atsina doesn't need to be slow to recruit. It's not, it's not so much better than, than other things that are around its tier. Um, I think that's, it's interesting and it's serviceable. And if you have like 15 of these guys raiding someone, they can be a big pain in the ass to deal with. So, sure. Especially depending on what your bless is. Um, so there's that. And then we have our Wuyas. Okay, so these are the big ones. Best, biggest, brightest, can only be recruited in the capital. What are we getting? Dear Lord fucking Jesus, we're getting robbed. That's what we're getting. 580 gold. Holy crap. Christ. This is one of the most expensive uh, commanders in the game. Not the most expensive commander in the game. But it is one of the most expensive commanders in the game. And again, I think is slightly overpriced. I think is slightly overpriced for what it does compared to other things in DE. If this were compared to something in vanilla even, I think it's still kind of somewhat in the midfield, right? So very, 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 very expensive. Slow to recruit. Good HP, 55, so we're much more in giant territory now. We're size 4. Um, good strength, 22. Very mediocre stats, you can see here. And I I take issue with this. Like, I take issue with it being 10 attack and 11 defense. And we'll talk about it here further. I, there's a reason why. But I think this should be higher base and the, re the other reason should exist. Um... Actually, let's just talk about that now. The other reason, the reason why these are low is because they have death power. They have death power minus one, which actually means growth power. So they gain plus one um, to their stats in growth. So in growth three, they will be plus three attack, plus three defense, plus three strength, plus three precision, right? In death three, they will be minus three those things. For what you are getting here, we should be like base attack 12, defense 13, and then we should be getting those things. Um, these stats are set low because the concept is, oh, well, most people are going to have growth 3, so you're going to have plus 3. Yeah, sure, but that just means that I have attack skill 13 on a 600 gold mage. A 600 gold giant class mage. This should be... This is less than it should be. Um, we've got Protection 9, which is relatively low. Um, and that is from our Enchanted Leather Hauberk. But we also have Invulnerable 15. So that's going to help us against Indies. We've got pretty decent Magic Resistance at 18. Um, and okay Morale at 16. Um, we've got Earth 2, Nature 3... 
H3. So pretty decent paths, and we've got a random, right? We've got air, water, earth, nature. So we can get nature three, we can get earth, or so we, we can get nature four, we can get earth three. Um, those are both pretty valuable. Um, that's gonna let us do things like Strength of Gaia. That's gonna let us do all of the big buffs, right? We can put Earth Boots on these guys and do all of the the Earth 5 buffs, Army of Gold, etc., etc. We can do easy Legions of Steel and th Strength of Giants and things like that. But keep that in mind, right? We can do those things, but we do those things at a fucking cost, right? There are nations who are doing those things for... I mean, take take Ur, right? Um, you can do those things on all of their Enkidu shamans, and those guys are like half the price of this, right? Like, this is... We don't want to pay 600 gold just to do those buffs. No, these guys got to do other shit. They've got to they've gotta be fucking workhorses. Um, fortunately, they are somewhat able of, capable of doing that, but we'll talk about that more. Um, other things they've got going on is they've got 120 leadership, they've got 105 magic leadership, which is important, because keep in mind, remember our Katina are all, uh, magic beings, so we need magic leadership. Um, and then they've got a little bit of poison resistance, they've got supply bonus 30, and that's about it. Um... So back to that random magic skill, we do get a couple of interesting things. If we get water or air, um, air we can boost to air 2 if we need to, and then we can actually do some interesting air things. Um, and then if we get water, we can do things like moss body or um, potentially like putting like a ring on them and doing uh, quicken self or things like that. So we can do some pretty interesting stuff there. These guys do come with a length four Katsina War Spear. Well, it's the it's actually the regular Katsina War Spear, but because they are size four, it bumps up to length four, and it hits pretty hard. So, again, they have a built-in vine shield. They've got really good thugging paths, um, but these guys are super super duper expensive. It's really so for me. I think. Um, I think Chaco is on that cusp of being really cool, having some really cool fun stuff, but because I, I think I think they were overbalanced, right? Like I I think they were I think whoever made them was like, oh, this is gonna be too powerful if we do this thing, if we do XYZ. So we gotta make this really cost. I think you could slash the prices like you could drop the cost on the Katsina Warriors down to like 75 gold and they'd still be fine. You could drop the Katsina Archers down to like 85 and they'd still be fine. You could drop the... You could leave the Monk Katsina where it is and just make it not slow to recruit. Or if it's going to be slow to recruit, drop the price like 30 or 40, you know, and go from there. And give it a fucking random. <laughs> like, goddamn. And then the Wuya is... Oof. This is this is mixed, right? Because there are other there are other mages, right, who cost about this amount or a little bit more in DE that have three or four more paths than the Wuya, right? And obviously, so it's hard to it's hard to count priest levels in certain situations because priest levels only get you so much. Um so I don't know, priest levels are kind of like this in between, like I, I count them as like half a magic level when, when you're actually looking at things like this. But there are there are some crazy mages in DE. And I think the Wuya again, I think it's that scenario of they're like, oh well they're gonna have death power and they're gonna have a built-in vine shield. There's gonna they're gonna kick so much ass. Are they though? Are they? Really? Well, we're gonna make them try. That's the plan. We're gonna make them try. So that's that's the cast. That's what we've got going on. We've got our magic site, uh, Sipapu, which gives us two water, two earth, two nature, and lets us recruit Wuya's Katsina archers and Katsina warriors. Um, so this is this is an interesting nation, but I do not think it is nearly as strong as most of the DE nations. 
Um, I do. I think it was like I said. I think it was overly balanced. I think uh, it the individuals who made it were probably too hesitant, too worried about it being strong, um, and so it's it's held back a little bit. We're gonna do our best to uh, make it a little bit better. We'll see how it goes. Um, so let's take a quick look at the na the national spells. Um, the nation Chaco has no national items or anything like that, so we don't have to worry about that. But we'll take a look at the national spells. Um, get rid of the flaming missiles. Do national spells. Um, so. Take a quick look and we can see the vast majority of the national spells are conjuration spells and then we have two alterations. We'll go through the conjurations real quick um, and then we'll talk about the alterations. So conjurations, um, basically just a whole bunch of summons. And if we looked, if we remember in the overview, it says uh, powerful sacred summons. So, ooh, that should be exciting, right? So first off, conjuration two, we get some serpent warriors, um, and you're, you're going to notice immediately, right? It says only at site 1773. That is Sipapu, which means this can only be cast at our capital. Okay. Um, so what do we get for it? It's, uh, 10 nature gems, two nature, one earth. We get five serpent warriors and five serpent archers. What are those? We've got serpent warriors over here. Um, very mediocre stats across the board, except 14 protection, which is significantly better than most of the other shit we get. They've got poisoned, uh, spears, which is actually okay. Um, they've got poisoned spit, which is also actually okay. And then they've got venomous fangs, which is also actually okay. They also have built-in regeneration. These guys aren't bad. Unfortunately, they're not sacred. When they get wounded, they turn into... Snakes that have decent HP. These guys actually aren't garbage. They're just not wonderful. And honestly, I think one of the things to kind of like, quote unquote, fix Chaco or make it more competitive in DE is to make things like these sacred. To make the Serpent Warrior sacred, to make the Ant Warrior sacred... If you're gonna, especially if they're restricted to your capital, right? Like the Serpent Warriors and the Ant Warriors both are. If they're gonna be restricted to your capital, make them sacred. Maybe maybe nerf the amount that you get, because you do get a lot of them. You get, it's a one-to-one -one ratio for gems. So that's pretty decent. Um, but uh, because they're not sacred, they're just kind of like, okay. You also get the serpent archers, which are they've got a poison bow, same stuff, right, as the serpent warrior does. Again, mediocre stats, okay protection, and it turns into a serpent archer, which is the same exact thing as the serpent warrior. So you know, whatever. Um, undisciplined animal, yada 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 yada. So, um, if these were sacred, sacred, we would probably use the shit out of them. As it is, we'll still spam them if we need bodies, right? If we really need some bodies, we'll spam them. Another unit, if we really need bodies, is the Ant Warriors. So these guys, again, only at Sipapu. They cost five gems, and you get eight of them instead of uh, the ten that you get of the Serpent Warriors, and it costs less. So these guys are pretty good. You get two variants. You get the Ant Warrior with a spear, and you get the Ant Warrior with a sword and shield. Um, 14 protection, okay HP, and meh stats. Okay strength and okay attack skill, but really crappy defense. Um, the Ant Warrior with a shield has somewhat better defense, yada, yada, yada. They have Dark Vision, and they have Formation Fighter, so that's actually kind of cool. Um, and you can... You can sh summon a bunch of these again though they're not sacred so you summon a bunch you're summoning a bunch of protection 14 chaff that's just standing there like okay i guess right um again they're cool but chaka would be a de nation if these guys were sacred and again, right, it's that scenario of 
it, make them sacred, but give them less. Like, only do two ant warriors and, and or two spears and two shields, right? Like, but you're still cool then. You're still producing these cool sacred ants that came out of hell, right? Because remember, Supapu is the hole leading to the underworld, right? Uh, obviously, this underworld doesn't help, but whatever. Um, so... Next up, we've got Summon Bears, and this is the classic Rusian spell, um, and these guys are sacred. So, okay, cool. We've got uh, we've got fat bears that hit really hard, but otherwise have really shit stats. Um, really good at taking um, protection buffs, really good at taking um, regenerations and things like that. Um, but they're animals and they have really low magic resistance, so these guys are potentially really good in the early game. Because uh, you can get 7 out of 8 gems, and if you have a higher nature caster, you can get even more, right? Um, which is pretty easy for us with Wuyas. But uh, in, in, the, in the early game, that's good. In the late game, these guys are going to get uh, hit with... Um, animal enslavement spells and master enslavement, like, they, they're gonna drop like flies. Um, so that's kind of a pain in the ass. Uh, at Conjuration 3, uh, oh, the other thing is, is these guys aren't super easy to cast because they require you be, you can't just be Nature 1, you have to be Nature 1 Priest 1, so only our Monketsinas or only our Wuyas both of our slow to recruit people, we we can't even get these on Povosquas, right? Because our Povosquas aren't um, priests, right? So that's that's a pain in the ass. Um, yet another reason why it's kind of like this. Uh, Chaco is like right on the cusp of being good, and and this is you know it's difficult to get this to work well because those are valuable mage turns, right? Anyways. Uh, next up, we have Herds of Bison. Um, these are not sacred. Uh, very simple tramplers. Um, it's kind of... They do go berserk, right? Um, but it's kind of that scenario of if you were going to do something like this, you, you've got to have a really, really special reason to be doing Bison instead of Bears, right? Uh, they're at the same uh, tier, Conjuration 3. Uh, the bison are more expensive. You get less of them. <laughs> they have less HP. They have two attacks, but they're tramplers. So mo more often than not, they're going to be trampling. So it's basically the only time you're really going to use bison is if you're like, I really need to trample something. And that's it. <laughs> um, so yeah. The not sacred. And and I'm not, you know, I, I don't want everything to be sacred. I, I don't. Like, I actually don't even care about the bears being sacred. I think the serpent warriors and the... Because the, these are unique. These are only EA Chaco spells. Only EA Chaco spells. Those should be the ones that are sacred. Not summon... Who the fuck gives us summon bears? Whatever. Like, who, who gives a fuck about bison? Whatever. Right? All right, next up, Conjuration 4. We have Atasayas. And these are the Chaco line exclusives. So Chaco, Ongtupquas, etc. Uh, they cost three gems, um, three earth, and they will summon this bad boy. And this guy is kind of interesting. He has um, multiple attacks, uh, kind of a flurry of attacks. He's got high strength, so these attacks do hit relatively hard. Okay, um, Decent attack skill. But relatively low defense, okay protection, okay magic resistance. Um, basically, his scenario is, and this is why he's somewhat interesting, is he's got built-in berserker, and he can eat people with this bite, right? Um, so he can basically digest smaller beings, okay? Um, the problem is, is he's not, he's not sacred, um, and is he a commander? Yeah, he's not a commander. So this is just, you know, this is just a guy you throw in on your flanks, I guess. This is, this is hard, this is a hard one to get work. 
working. This is, uh, I think there's a bunch of spells like this in Dominions period that have really cool creatures associated with them, but they're just so inefficient on mage turns. Like, like think about who casts this in Chaco, right? The only out of the gate Earth 3 we can get is a Wuya. Do you want a Wuya spending turns summoning one Atasaya for three fucking Earth Gems? Why? What? Huh? Oh, is this guy actually? I think this guy is a commander. Yeah, this guy is a commander. So you can use them as like raiders, but that's not they're not going to be great raiders. You it's I have I have no these are cool. They're interesting, right? But when you look at them conceptually, this is a worthless spell. This spell does nothing. There is there is little to no scenario where this is going to be worthwhile to cast or or use even if you did cast it. Which is a that's a that's a shame. It's heartbreaking. So next up, we actually have one of the interesting things for Chaco. We have Conjuration Five, Ogre Dance. So this is five nature gems, one nature, one earth, um, and it gets us. We we only get one of them at a time, but it gets us the Katsina Ogres. And I was just uh, talking about you know um, this. It's not a worthwhile you know scenario. We can actually do these with our Povosquas, um, or we can do them with our Monketsinas. We don't have to do these with Wuyas. Um, so these are somewhat better um, in the right situations. So basically in mid to late game, we can create Katsina Ogre Factories um, for our nature gems. Um, and what we get out of them is we do get a sacred unit that is a magic being with spirit sight high hp super high strength okay stats elsewise okay magic resistance okay morale because it's sacred it has the built-in bind shield um has built-in invulnerability has some sort of awe but i don't actually know how that works um and these guys are these guys are kind of thick they're so if you have you know if you have 10 15 of them on a flank they're gonna they're gonna potentially fuck up that flank because their claw and bite hits pretty hard um with the massive amount of strength that they have um and because they're sacred that entangle that all katsina have um is pretty good like just imagining 10 15 thugs right in your mind with vine shields on a flank in an in a battle is pretty decent like they're gonna they're gonna hold up that flank or chew through that flank typically speaking um so these guys are pretty good but they can be difficult to get going right like five nature gems for one thing is pretty steep um pretty pretty fucking steep i yeah i don't know and unfortunately, there's not like a higher higher conjuration version of them. There's not like a, you know, get five of them for 25 or, or anything like that to make it more like turn efficient. So it's kind of a bit of a pain in the ass. Um, the, uh, the one fortunate thing is, is that compared to the Serpent Warriors and the Ant Warriors, this is not a capital only spell. So you can you can make a factory wherever you need to. Um, so there is that. Next up, we have the Ant Warrior Swarm. Um, and this is really cool. Uh, again, though, it is capital only. But you get 30 Ant Warriors for 15 Earth Gems. Um, three Nature, or three Earth, one Nature. Conjuration 6. So only our, really only our um, Wuyas or maybe some uh, Monk Katsinas if you're boosting up, right? At, at that point, you could probably boost... Um, do some earth boots, do you know, other stuff. Uh, you can even get Povosquas to cast this if you're doing the vision stuff later on. Um, so this is pretty cool. You get a you get a lot of units out of this. This is very gem efficient, but it is what you're getting. Does what you is what you're getting worth it, right? And I don't know. 
again, I think if these guys were sacred, even if you got less of them, say instead of you got instead of getting 30, you got like 20 or something like that. Um, if they were sacred, then absolutely you could make builds around that, and that would be something that would set Chaco apart. It'd be like a you know, an interesting this is a this is a summon nation, right? But as it is, these guys are okay. They don't wear armors, so they they take bless they, or they take buffs, but they only take them so well. Um, and I just like I don't think that that they're actually that good. At the end of the day, they're okay, and they'll help you in a pinch. But I don't think they're actually that good. Um, if they were sacred, or if they were here's the here's the other thing. I keep going to sacred because I think sacred is the that's dominions, right? Making things sacred and having them be built upon, etc. That's cool. If you don't make them sacred, that's okay. Just make them better, right? Like these guys are still very mediocre. Um, if they're gonna be, if they're gonna be like, oh yeah, you can summon all these ant warriors. They're really cool. Give them something that's really cool. Give their bite like a poison or give their, you know, give them super high protection. Give them like 18, 19 protection or something like that, right? Like give them a reason to be a big important thing, you know? I, I, I don't think they really have it right now. Next up, we have the Yaya Ponza Dance. Um, and this is kind of a very weird comparatively. This is three fire, two air. So there is no way for you to cast this out of the gate on your nation. You have to build for this or you have to get lucky or you have to boost. Um, but what it gets you is for 30 gems, you get the Yaya Ponsta. Um, and it is a commander. Um, it is a Katsina. Um, so it is sacred, I think. Yeah, forward-looking Katsina with shaggy hair and bodies painted like ash. Um, so they come out of the gate with a bunch of resistances, a heat aura, a fire shield, um, all of the normal stuff and vulnerability. They also have fear. Um, they have a bottle of flames, which does a little AoE fire attack. Um, and they have decent stats. Um, because they are sacred, if you can build for these, these guys can turn into kind of like interesting things. And they they feed off themselves, right? So you can make more of them. As long as you can make one of them, you can make more of them, right? Um, so these guys can be pretty interesting, but they're very expensive. I say very expensive. They're, they're very well priced. I think they're very expensive compared to what we're looking at here. But if you think about it, like a flame spirit for just a fire three flame spirit is I think also conjuration six and costs 30 fire gems. So you're getting way more for this Yaya Ponsa than you are that. So that's interesting. Um, the problem is, is trying to, trying to get this. You either have to build your God to do this or you have to boost up and get lucky. Um, but these guys can be pretty cool uh, and add a lot to your nation as far as like what your options are. Uh, next up we got also at Conjuration 6 we've got Corn Maiden. Uh, takes 3 nature to cast. 18 gems. Um, and this one's kind of a weird one for me. Um, they resist disease. They have very low stats across the board. They have a supply bonus. And they increase growth scales. Okay. Cool. Uh, I just I just don't see why we would care. If this was like earlier, if this was like Conjuration 3 or something like that, um I could see, "Oh, okay. So let's let's balance this. We're not going to take growth, right? We're going to we're going to de we're going to intentionally only take like growth 1 or 2 or something like that, right? And then we're going to summon a bunch of corn maidens and we're going to put them all on our our big important locations and that's how we're going to kind of like you know cheese the system you know squeeze everything min max everything etc but this comes at conjuration six and it doesn't really do anything it doesn't offer anything else it's a it's a nature two mage that can get water earth and nature it eh, what do i care like i this seems very meh to me. I guess the one thing is that it does have a supply bonus of 
of 70. But a bag of wine costs 5 gems and has a supply bonus of 50. So again, why do I care? This is another one of those kind of like the Atasayas, right? Cool, but worthless. I, I just don't know what you would use this for or why you would use it. Uh, next up, we have uh, a little trio. We have the Primordial Bear, the Primordial Deer, and those are at Conjuration 6, and then later on we have the Primordial Wolf. So Primordial Bear is 25 gems, you get one of them, and it is just a fucking massive sacred bear. Um, so <laughs> this guy is super huge, 138 hit points, 28 strength, um, has fear, has Berserker 7, has built-in regeneration, um, these guys are kind of fucking crazy. Um, so, this is cool. If you have a thick bless, now they're not Katsina, so they don't have a built-in vine shield or anything like that. Um, but if you have a thick bless, you can, you can get to this, and you can get to this point. You can start summoning primordial bears and just sending them out, and they're really fucking hard to deal with. Um... Now, they, they're not casters, right? So you have to put, like, a bottle on them or something like that. And that takes up one of their... Because they're animals, they only have two miscellaneous slots. So that takes up one of their two miscellaneous slots, which is kind of a pain in the ass. But it's still somewhat worthwhile. Like, this is kind of... I, I think when, um, when they say has access to powerful sacreds, I think that's what they mean, is, is the bear, the deer, and the wolf, basically. Um, cause, you know, you get enough of these guys going, and they're not bad. Uh, the problem is, is, again, they are animals. Again, they are, um, commanders that have low slots, which means you're not gonna be able to boost them against all of the different things that you want to boost them again. You're not going to be able to put, like, a Shade Mail on them so that they're stealthy. You're not going to be able to put Magic Resist gear on them so they don't get Soul Slayed, um, etc, etc. And when you think about that and the fact that they're 25 Nature Gems, it becomes a situation where it's kind of like, okay, that's cool, but I don't know that it's super mega awesome. Still cool, right? Um, we've also got the Primordial Deer, which is in much the same scenario. It is sacred, it has trample, it has animal awe, Beastmaster, has a thicky ass supply bonus, very cool. Um, does this one, is that, are you shitting me? Hold up, hold up. Maybe I'm wrong. Because it says that these guys have item slots for two hands, head, body, feet, two miscellaneous on both of these. Alright, hold up. Hold, hold that thought. I gotta go, I gotta go check something. Yeah, no, that's, that's bullshit. That's not true. Um, so here's like, here's the Great Bear God. Um, and it also says two hands, head, body, feet, two misc. And that is not true. It, it only has two miscellaneous. Um, so I would assume that this is also just not showing correctly. That's weird. That's super weird. Alright, anyways. Uh, so Primordial Deer, it has Trample. It's, so it's, it's basically, do you want a Trampler? Take the Deer. Do you want a Berserker? Take the Bear. Okay. Done and done. <laughs> That's pretty much it. <laughs> oh, goodness. Okay. Uh, next up, also at Conjuration 6, we have the Achilatopa. Achilala. Achi. Yala Topa. Probably butchering these. Astral 3, which is not easy for us to get out of the gate, but uh, we can get there through boosting. Um, 20 Astral Pearls, so somewhat expensive but we get this guy and it's i think actually probably really worth it um so this guy right out of the gate is uh he's not sacred right but he is 
a air two astral two um and that's pretty fucking good for this nation right um pretty damn good he's got okay stats high protection good hit points i say okay stats he's got high strength um everything else is okay um okay magic resistance okay morale he's got a bunch of attacks Although I wouldn't really be using these guys as just like thugs or raiders or anything like that. You could if you've just got a shit ton of fucking astral gems. Like you're getting 40 per fucking turn or you've got arcane nexus up or some shit like that. Sure. Some of these guys to your heart's content. Um, but generally I think these guys are most important by getting a couple of them. And then getting them into your big armies with your Chikoan star priests and summoning big air options like fog warriors or uh fucking mists of deception or storm if you need that type of shit you know what have you so or mass flight hell like that's that's what these guys are probably good for um next up we have conjuration sex seven contact coyote now the this is a unique commander so this is mai um the coyote he comes in um very mediocre stats that's not what he's here for what he's here for is uh so it costs four fire and 40 fire gems to get him so again kind of hard for this nation out of the gate but he comes in as a three fire three air three earth sacred glamoured crazy man <laughs> who can also turn into a pupper and I don't... Yeah, I don't know. If you need these cross paths, okay, then he's cool, right? Um, like, if you don't if you don't have fire, air, but you do have fire... Note that. If you don't have fire, air, but you do have fire, you can use Ma'i to get into the Yaya Ponsas, right? Um, and the Yaya Ponsas are actually quite good... So I would consider this a viable scenario, right? But other than that, he's not he's not super interesting on his own. He gets you a couple of he gets you nine magic paths. If you need those paths, cool. If you don't need those paths, then he's got nothing else that he's offering. So it's kind of whatever. Um next up we have the primordial wolf um, and this guy is slightly more expensive than the Primordial Bear or Deer. Um, comes in at Conjuration 7, gems required 30. And he has less HP than those. Um, he is still a sacred unit, um, etc., which is cool. Um, but his big deal is he starts every battle with Howl. Now, it's Conjuration 7, so it kind of doesn't matter as much at that point, right? Um... But this guy isn't unique. You can have several primordial wolves, so you can throw them into your own armies and have a auto cast howl, which is again at Conjuration Seven probably not too big of a deal. But okay, that's nice. It's also again we've got Wuyas. You're probably gonna have a Wuya with every big army, and they can cast howl too. So like, what's it matter? Um, it's interesting. But I don't think it's super mega awesome important. Um, your mileage may vary. Next up, uh, Conjuration 8. We're almost there. We're almost done. Uh, we have a unique commander for Death 4, which we have no death on this nation. Um, so very hard to get unless you're specifically trying for it. Probably going to have to boost for it. Um, Fire 3, you can get Musawu, the Skeleton Man. And this guy is pretty neat looking. Um, high HP, good stats, high strength, um, resists fire, resists cold, resists poison, resists disease, has awe, invulnerability 20, 25% fortune teller, um, is sacred, has a bunch of other stuff going on for him, um, but is a fire 3, earth 2, death 4. But it takes death 4 to get to him, and it takes fire 3 to get to him. So, again, it's that scenario of if you can get to him, you already have those paths, and he doesn't really get you anything else. Um, 
Like, he's just cool. I just wish, like, you know, I wish this was something else, right? Like, if, if this is going to take 4 death, 3 fire, and 50 death gems to get to this guy, then make this guy 5 death, 4 fire, and 3 earth, right? Or give this guy, like, he's the Katsina of death, make him auto-cast life after death, right? Like, give this guy, we get one of him. We get fucking one of him. Give this guy something really cool. Like, this guy isn't going to stand up against, like, a Grigory or some shit like that. So, like, his stats don't really matter as much. What matter is, what can he cast, or does he have a special ability? And what he can cast is potentially already going to be castable if we can get him, and he has no big special ability. So this is this is kind of what I'm talking about with this, the concept of like, Chaco is right on that cusp of being cool, of having cool stuff, but not really. And and it would be cool. It would be neat to have something like an autocast life after death or an autocast, I don't think it would even be that great for them, but maybe like an autocast darkness, right? Like most of our sacreds, I say most of our, all of our sacreds have spirit sight, right? So darkness doesn't do anything to them. Um, and maybe that, that would be a cool thematic, you know, like they live at the gate of the underworld, right? They're used to the darkness of the world, right? And Mus when Musawu walks with their armies, he brings the darkness of, of the, the underworld. That would be interesting. That would be cool. As it is right now, I'm like, why do I care about this guy? Other than the fact that he looks neat. Rinse and fucking repeat. <laughs> Grandmother Spider. Another unique commander, super cool thematic situation, can wounded shape into a spider, but just doesn't have anything. Has has really shitty stats, actually. Has super high poison resistance. I, I guess here's the here's the thing with her. She has inspired researchers, so she does inspire the research of others, but she's at conjuration eight. At that point, it's probably not gonna matter. Again, if she was like Conjuration 4, it's fucking cool. Hell yeah. You you can rush her and try to get your your research up boosted. Yeah, that's fucking dope. I like that. Cool. She also has Disease Healer 5. But Disease Healing isn't... Healing is hard to come by. Disease healing isn't that hard to come by, so I it, it kind of feel like it doesn't really matter. And other than that, you just get, uh, you get a H3, we have recruitable H3s, you get a nature 4, you have to have a nature 5 to even summon her, and then what do you get in her spider form? Nothing. You, you get, you get nothing better. That's it. A, a same thing as Musawu, right? Like... I, I guess I guess maybe not quite the same thing as Musawa. This could be cool. Inspired Researcher could be cool, right? Um, if that's the one that I'm thinking of. Yeah, she'll share her wisdom with whoever she considers worthy. So she, she basically inspires other researchers. This could be cool. This could be the unique thing about Spider Grandmother. But coming in at Conjuration 8, I think is kind of worthless. Like, that's so late in the game that the game's probably either over or you've got your research on lock and adding in a little adding in inspired researcher at one location isn't going to matter so make make her give her something else or make her earlier in conjuration conjuration 4 would absolutely and I wouldn't even change the price right like I'd still make her in nature 5 I'd still make her cost 50 gems but just have her show up earlier, and then suddenly she's got this cool, unique reason for existing. Alright, so those are all the Conjurations. We only got two more unique spells. Uh, next up, these are both specifically used for the Povosquas. And they're going to be, in my opinion, another example of Chaco being potentially cool, but right on that cusp of not being cool. Um, can we bring up the Povosqua at the same time? I think we can. Let's do that. So we can actually see what we're talking about. So we've got our Povosqua. Sweet. Alright, so Povosquas... We don't even see... Oh, 
the the mod inspector doesn't always show the things that it should show so these guys come in at earth one right um and they have at alteration three they can go on a vision quest and then at alteration six they can go on a vision trance um it costs eight gems to go on the vision quest and when it happens right um they will lose their research penalty so they'll lose the minus three uh, inept researcher that they have. Okay, that's nice. They gain Master Ritualist, which means they will cast rituals at one higher than what they are. But you got to keep in mind, again, they're only Earth 1 and then a random between Fire, Air, Earth, and Nature. So they're going to be Master Ritualist 2 on two things either um master ritualist fire two um earth two or if they get an earth two they'll be earth ritualist three which is kind of whatever and then they get fortune teller 15 um which is okay that's cool you can actually uh avoid bad events or uh get good events etc so well, i say get good events i guess fortune teller doesn't get you good events does it it can avoid bad events but i don't think it i don't think it gets you new events it just warns you of of some impending events um but you get soul slate basically <laughs> Um, so you have to, every time you do this, it's going to cost eight gems for every single provost squad that you do, and you're going to have to load them up with magic resist gear. They have a base magic resistance of 13, so if you want to secure this, you've got to go pretty high. So that means like an amulet of anti-magic, a lodestone, um, a lead crown, and a lead shield. Right, that gets you to plus eight, plus three, so plus 11. So that will get you up to 24. Um, and at 24, you should resist most of them, but you're not gonna resist all of them. Every once in a while, you'll you'll get hit and you'll lose that Pavosqua, you'll lose the eight gems and you'll lose the gear attached. So that sucks. Um, and that doesn't get you much, honestly. Uh, losing your research penalty, minus three research, that's not a big deal. Um, gaining Master Ritualist, one, is not a super big deal. And Fortune Teller, 15% is kind of whatever. Um, so next up is the Vision Trance. So maybe this, the first step isn't worth it, but maybe the next step is worth it, right? 12 gems, so increased cost for every single provost squad so it's going to take 20 gems 20 earth gems total for every provost squad you want to do this to um gonna soul slay you again so you get you gotta go max out all your mr again and then this time all your magic paths are increased to fire one air one earth two nature one if they are lower right so if you if you already have earth 2 you're just going to get fire 1 air 1 nature 1 okay um oof fucking oof honestly like honestly that is such a letdown 20 gems to get what you're what you're getting 20 gems to to lose your research penalty and you're going to get more research out of them because you're going to get uh more magic paths but this is at alteration six. I don't think it's going to matter that much, right? Um, you'll gain master ritualist for this. So the cap, you can't get higher than ritualist fire two, ritualist air two, ritualist earth three, which you already have access to, and ritualist nature two, which you already have access to. So all you're getting is... Fire 2, Air 2. That does mean um, that you can get very close to Yaya Ponsa Dance um, with the Pavosquas. You just need a Fire Booster. Okay? But how you get to that Fire Booster is like, any, right? Because you don't have any other higher fire to get there with. You know? Um, so this is incredible 
incredibly mediocre. And I think it's I think it's actually very easy. I say very easy. I think it's pretty easy to make this slightly better. This should not be an increased to fire one, air one, earth two, nature one, if lower. This should just be a gain plus one fire, plus one air, plus two earth, and plus one nature. Actually, I wouldn't do plus two earth. I would just do plus one fire, plus one air, plus one earth, and plus one nature. Because we're already so we're already gonna be nature one, and we're already gonna get a random. So at most, this gets us fire one, air one. Nature, or Earth 3, Nature 1, or it gets us a 2 in any of those other ones, and a 2 in Nature, or Earth, rather. Um, so it's it's never going to be a super mega awesome, but it is marginally better than what you're getting with uh, this, and it gets you to that point to where you could potentially do Ritualist Fire 3, or Ritualist Air 3, um, and that's potentially important. Right? Like, that could actually be good. Um, even then, though, I don't think it's really great. I think the other caveat is somewhat that um, once you have a couple of these guys, you can use them, like I said, with boosters to do things like Yaya Ponza Dance. Um, you can use them to do summon Ant Warrior Swarms. Um... So you can basically try to free up your Wuyas or your Mongkatsinas and things like that. But it's a very ex expensive investment to do that. Um, I, I think, again, it's, it's, a, it's what a lot of Chaco is. On the cusp of a cool idea, but not really that good. Um, and that, sorry, that's, that's where we're probably going to close this out. It's been an hour and a half of me basically saying... Uh, we're playing a nation that I think is interesting, but not really good. And that's about that's about how it's going to hash out. Um, the next video is going to be discussing Pretender design and going over the scales and bless that we choose. And uh, then we're going to be jumping into the game. So I hope you're excited. Um... If nothing else, it's going to be an exciting game because there's just so many people and the map's so big and there's so much going on. Um, even if I'm not as excited about the nation itself. So, um, that's going to be it for now. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye, everybody.